Hey, welcome to this video on E-mini futures trading basics using the tick index. This is a powerful tool. It's changed a bit over the years and it's very popular. So I want to share with you how it really works because I find that a lot of people are not teaching this correctly. So I'm going to be a little heterodox with you today, but hey, most successful trading is heterodox, meaning unorthodox or against what's normally taught. So first of all, we have two things on our chart. These are two minute bars. You could even go down to one minute on something like this. I'll tell you why in a minute. So we've got the E-minis down here. And here we have the tick index. Now, some people call this the tick indicator, and that's wrong. This is not an indicator. It's an index. An indicator is something that is a derivative of other things, mathematical formula. Uh, things like price, volume, and indexes are just what they are. They're not derivatives of anything else. Um, in this case, they're basically statistics. So what is a tick? A tick is when a stock, in this case, is based on the stock in um, the stock market, New York Stock Exchange, specifically in this case. It is when a stock moves up. So if the last trade is traded at a higher price than the previous trade, then that would be a, an uptick. And conversely, if the last trade uh, trades one trades lower than the previous trade before that, then that would be a down tick. So literally, every single trade that comes through the market is an uptick or a down tick from the previous trade. So very short term indication on this index. That's the first thing you need to know about it. It is a very, very short term indication. Now I use three levels. And these have changed over the years, but um, in today's market, I find these levels very helpful. So first of all, you've got your midline. Actually, it's uh, zero. <laughs> so zero is neutral. All right. And then I've got my upper line here, which is 600. And then the extreme line, which is 1,000. Then down below here, we have negative 600 and negative 1,000. So these are very, very extreme, obviously. Anything around zero is neutral. Now, here's what is a little unusual. A lot of people will say that when you get down to these lower levels, that that is bullish, that the market is getting oversold. And if you saw my videos on the RSI, you've heard me talk about this concept. Uh, that is not correct because what's actually happening here is we are getting bearish movement. So I actually put on my charts a, an audio alert so that when the tick index comes and hits this line here or hits the very lowest line, which happens much more rarely, that an audio alert goes on. And that tells me that there is now a very bearish move in the market. So my sentiment switches to bearish. And I don't even have to watch the chart. I have it actually on a separate monitor. I don't even really watch when the audio alerts go on for certain things. Then it alerts me to, oh, okay, wait a minute. This is bearish. So as you can see, it hits the red line there. It hits the red line there. And indeed, the market does end up going down quite a bit. Now, the other side of it is, so, okay, we go down, we hit the red line, and which is negative 600. As it retraces, we like to see it hold the zero line. Now, it's not going to hold it exactly, but what we don't want it to do is go back up to positive 600 or the green line. So we want it to go down here, hit this level multiple times, and then as on the retrace, kind of stay here around zero. So there's strength down and weakness up, and that creates the bearish movement. That is showing bearish sentiment in the market. Now, a neutral market is when the tick index just kind of hovers around the zero line, goes a little bit above, a little bit below, a little bit above, a little bit below, never hits negative 600 or positive 600. That indicates basically a choppy market. That's one of the questions I get a lot of people asking me, how do I stay out of a choppy market? Well, this would be one way that you could do that. Now notice all of a sudden then boom, we get a nice impulse move and it goes up and hits positive 600. So now we've become bullish. And if you look at this, you know, the market did basically go sideways during this time, came off of this low and then went sideways. And then once we hit that, 
then from there to there, yeah, it does go up a bit. It's not going up a huge amount. Again, remember, this is a very short-term chart. And by the way, this is not, you know, it's just a two-minute chart. So this is best for scalping, real short-term trading. This thing can change very quickly. Um, we don't go, the other thing is that we don't go back up and hit 600 again, do we? So that's a little bit of a warning. Now, on the other hand, on the retraces, it is pretty much holding the zero line. And one way to know if it's holding the zero line, yes, it goes a little below the zero line, but look, each one of these bars is still touching the zero line. None of them get completely below it. And most importantly, none of them get down to negative 600. So that's indicating to me that there's still bullish sentiment here. It may not have been as strong as the bearish sentiment we had over here, but, and that's why it moves up on a more gradual basis. Now look at this chart here. So again, same principles. We start out, uh, market doesn't hit negative 600 or positive 600. So we wait for the first time it does, boom, there it is. Now notice price hasn't really gone down much. In fact, up until this time, price action's been going up. And then we get this. And from there on out, market goes down. Notice by the way, again, same principle goes below 600. When it comes back up to retrace, it holds the zero line. Every one of these bars is touching the zero line. Goes back, hits negative 600 again. That's a good sign. Retraces. Now it gets a little bit uh, above here where we might not like it as much, but um, not quite as bad. But anyway, you catch a quick little move. Again, hey, you know, that's what maybe 30 minutes in the market that you are. Uh, maybe a little bit longer than that. But um, hey, not a bad little trade if you're a scalp trader. Now let's get realistic. Nothing works all the time. So I always love to show examples that don't work. You know, a lot of courses and things, people just show you all the, the perfect textbook examples and everything looks great. And then you go to trade it and it's like, hey, why didn't this work? Well, that's because nothing works all the time. In trading, we're not trading certainties, we're trading probabilities. So therefore, you always have to have money management and risk management involved um, because nothing works all the time. So here's a great example of that. I love to point these out in my courses and things. I always do this because I want to get in your mind um, the fact that, no, I'm not expecting this is going to work every time. So here we go, we hit positive 600. All right, and sure enough, the market, um, you know, been going up a little bit. That's cool. Now, however, it comes back down and it doesn't hit 600 again, but now it hits negative 600. Well, that sucks, right? <laughs> it went from negative 600 to positive 600 and then right back down to negative 600 again. Well, yeah, sometimes that's going to happen. So now the point is you can't use this alone. Just like anything else, you need to put together a number of non-correlated variables to give yourself a, um, a probability scenario. There's no holy grail, and this isn't a holy grail either. So this can be one extra piece of evidence that you use along with whatever trading method you're currently using. But don't use it alone. It is not foolproof. And so I like to show these examples. Now then, by the way, after it goes down to negative 600, it goes right back up to positive 600. So kind of crazy market right now, right? It's um, very volatile. So we get big move in one direction, the other, another, another. Now, however, it decides to settle in. So now it stays, it keeps coming back here, hitting 600, almost there. And on the downside, every one of these bars is touching the zero line. And um, therefore, at this point, it works very well. And from this point out, we can say, okay, we can be bullish here. So it becomes unidirectional. So on these other times, you basically just have to have your other indicators in line, watch price action, and most importantly, have your money management and risk management in place. And oh, one other thing I want to mention too is the timing your entries. So what will happen is the indicator, or not the indicator, but the index, uh, it'll come down and it'll hit one of these levels. And, but if you enter that level, you're basically buying when the market's already down. I like to, if you do that, you're going to be paying retail. I like to wait for a retrace and pay wholesale. And I use my timing or my cycle indicator in order to tell me when to get in. Be happy to make that available to you. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, send me an email at barry at topdogtrading.com. I'll be happy to share that with you absolutely free. Now, here's the last example I want to give. We haven't seen this yet. And this is more rare, especially these days, but it does happen. And that's where the index comes down to either 
negative 1,000 or goes up to positive 1,000. Now, back in the days of yore, I was always taught that that's a reversal situation because it's so extreme. And unfortunately, then I actually started trading and I found out that wasn't really so true. Uh, it is extreme and sometimes the market will reverse off of that. But again, it's really got to do with the dominant direction of the market. The market is in a dominant direction down. So it goes down, retraces a little bit, goes down again. What's it happened? What happened there? Well, it goes back and hits a negative thousand again, and then it almost does it a third time. So this whole time, um, you know, this is just a bearish, bearish market. It's usually not good to trade against the dominant energy of the market. And amateurs seem to always want to do that. Um, I used to always want to do that too. So I know we all as human beings seem to have some kind of instinct in us that we just want to trade against the dominant direction of the market. Let me tell you, that's the exact wrong thing to do. Always trade with the dominant direction of the market. There's times when you can trade against a trend. That's when it's uh, extended and gets weak. Uh, you get an exhaustion pattern, things like that. So there are setups for turn reversals, but believe me, um, even though the risk reward is good, the win loss ratio is not as good. And it's just so much easier to just go with the flow of the money. So there you go. Um, so even these extreme, um, and by the way, I'll say one more thing here. I found that on these extremes, usually the number three is pretty darn good. So if you do want to look for an exhaustion pattern, um, wait for it to hit a thousand three times, then look at everything else, look for other things that would um, cause you to think the trend's going to reverse. And if those line up after three times hitting a thousand or negative thousand, you may just get a trend reversal at that time. One last thing that I'll say too, there is a tick index for the NASDAQ and there's also a tin, uh, tick index for the Dow. I don't find them to be as reliable or as helpful. So you might think, well, if I'm trading the NQs or the YM, maybe I'd want to, or the diamonds or the Qs, you know, maybe I'd want to use the tick index for those markets. I don't find them to really be as reliable. So I just use the tick no matter what I'm trading. So if you like this video, hey, please understand, yep, it's free, take it, use it, but you do have a moral obligation to pay it forward by clicking on the share button below and share it on social media so other people can benefit from it as well. If you're watching it on YouTube, please click the thumbs up icon below and leave a comment because I love to hear from you guys. I really love your messages and that gives me encouragement to keep going and making more free videos for you. I'm also giving away one of my favorite trade strategies I call the rubber band trade. This rubber band trade, I take it pretty much every day and it's, um, it's just a great trade. It's got a very, very high win-loss ratio. It's very simple and I can get you that video absolutely free if you just click on the top uh, left corner there, that image, or if you're on a mobile device, click on the little eye with a circle around it in the top right corner of this video. And if you're not watching on YouTube, then there's probably a link below or an opt-in form on the side. Once you do that, I'll personally email the video to you with the rubber band trade strategy.